top field qualifying at the 60th March meet, Mother Nature set low ET in top speed. Because of the sporadic rain, the fueler guys and gals were only able to get one shot in for qualifying. Everyone knew that the weather was going to be dicey, so they set caution to the wind, put the hammer down, pulled the brake, and backpedaled in furious attempts to put a number up. Adam Sorokin hit the throttle five times in an attempt to qualify and ended up on the bump with an on again, off again 751. He will face your number one qualifier, Mendy Fry, in a first round ego battle where anything can happen. Tomorrow's first round is going to be insane. Pete Wittenberg, Jim Murphy, Brendan Murray, and the other fearless dragster drivers are going to be battling it out to take top fuel at Bakersfield, where dreams are made and glorious for the taking. Welcome to Drag Strip Rumble, uh, our second season, and Hold this, on. I know, we made it, right? Second season, it's crazy. Uh, this is uh, Top Fuel Action from the 60th March meet. This is Whit Bazemore, I'm Cole Kuntz. Whit qualifying was completely off the hook, and Gonzo and somewhat anticlimactic. It really was, simply because the double-A fuel dragsters only got one run right. in which to qualify, and that uh, makes the race kind of a crapshoot. Uh, there are four March Meet former winners in the show, and they're all on one side of the ladder. We've got Jim Murphy, Adam Sorokin, Mindy Fry, and Rick White. They've all won it before. They all know what it's like to taste victory at the coveted March Meet. So on the other side of the ladder, you have uh, four drivers who have never been close, to be blunt. Uh, Brendan Murray, Dan Horan, uh, Pete Wittenberg, Brett Williamson, and some of these people came as far as 2,000 miles <laughs> to make one hit. Um, Tim Cullinan, unfortunately, uh, came from Illinois, got the one lick, and that's it. One and done, as it were. Uh, you have the Ruskowski uh, entry, the exhibitionist, a small block Chevy from Vancouver, uh, Canada. Also, one hit, they oiled it, they were DQ'd. Yeah. And so I don't know how these people, the Ruskowskis, uh, the Dusty Greens, uh, the Rick McGee's, how they're managing their grief and what stage of grief they might be in at this moment in time. Well, I can only relate to how I felt when I didn't qualify, which was, uh, you know, quite often, unfortunately. <laughs> I won't admit that too too many times in public, but, public uh, yeah. but it is true. And, uh, you know, I was always somewhat suicidal, uh, never happy. Well, different you, people you, manage their grief in different ways. Right. And you can't judge. 
can't judge, but, you know, I was always out looking for a bank to rob so we had enough money to get home. Our condolences to the four drivers who didn't make it, uh, but now we're going to focus on the eight that did. And it's Mindy versus Adam. Are there some other matchups that you find particularly intriguing? All of them. Okay. You know, Jim Murphy is running uh, Rick White. That could be a good... A good yes. race, you know, yeah. Murphy's here without uh, his tuner Roland Leong simply because he's running a limited schedule. I see. Didn't make sense to pay uh, the huge bucks that Roland commands. Uh, there's Brett Williamson up against Dan Horan. Mm -hmm. so that'll be a good race. Anything can happen. You know, yes. Mike Fuller tuned entry. Uh, Generally good for 900 feet. Let's see if he can go 1320. Yep, maybe. Lastly, we have Pete Wittenberg. Again, we've we've alluded to his struggles versus Brendan Murray, who we have not seen in this eliminator in quite some time, and he's been racing Nostalgia Top Fuel since 1988. Really? They had it back then? They, oh wait, it's Nostalgia. They had it a long time ago. You know, Nostalgia ain't what it used to be, but uh, <laughs> we'll take it. So come back for the first round of Top Fuel Eliminator at the 60th March meet. Brandon Murray and this is the driver of the AA Fuel Dragster running wild. This is kind of an ugly situation. The weather's coming in, track's getting ugly, we all kind of second-guessed ourselves. This is not a pretty way to be in it, but it looks like we're in the show. Pete Wittenberg, driver of the Circuit Breaker Top Fuel Car. I averaged one trip down the grapevine per lap down the quarter mile. We left here at 8 a.m. No, 8 p.m. Got the motor built by 2 a.m. Got two and a half hours sleep. Got back here by 8 a.m. Put it in the car, made a lap. We got it in the show and all is well. Welcome back to the 60th March Beat Dragster Brumble Top Fuel Eliminator, the second qualifying session. The scratch that. This is the first eliminator, but there was no second qualifier. There was no third qualifier. Henceforth, these guys don't know where they're at. Whit, what can you say about Pete Wittenberg's entry? Well, Pete's uh, he's kind of turned over a new leaf. He's got one year under his belt uh -huh. as a driver, yep. and uh, that's very important. But I think more importantly for him is he's got Ace Tuner and a very good driver in his own right, a great racer, in my opinion, Jimmy Young, helping him. So uh, I would say they're the favorite, but you know, last year I would say these guys were evenly matched. So when you said Ace Tuner, uh, you were looking at the footage of his backup girl. Yes, she she could probably tune him up, but uh, Jimmy Young will be tuning him up now. Pete Wittenberg needs no real tuning up. Uh, Brendan Murray could use a little help. He gets out of shape, it shakes, and shuts it off. Wittenberg advances with a 584, 220 mile an hour. Wittenberg will take on the winner of the Brett Williamson Dan Horan matchup. You know, a 584, that was a good, I would say, a good conservative run. You have to go down the racetrack to win, and they did. It's a starting point. I'm Dan Horan Jr. from Rancho Cascades, California. I'm the driver of the Digger Dan Special, my late father's front engine top fuel car, working with the Kaiser family, running a tribute to my father in the south of top fuel. Hey, my name's Brett Williamson. I drive top fuel car for Mike Fuller, Forever Young. I'm from Gilroy, California. Mike's from Pleasanton. All the crew's from Sacramento. Boss man told me, do whatever it takes to get this thing A to B. I don't know what Mike was thinking, telling me do whatever I do. <laughs> I don't know if I did that right, man. <laughs> so here we go, second pair, uh, top fuel eliminator, round one, the 60th March meets. Brett Williamson versus Dan Horan. Uh, I will tell you this about Dan Horan, he's pulled out his old man's piece of pipe uh, and his homage uh, to his dad's racing career. Dad passed away a couple of years ago. The car sat in mothballs. Horan wasn't busy enough just running a funny car. He had to run a dragster tube. 
double duty. It has to be an exercise in schizophrenia. <laughs> yes. That's a hard thing to do. Yes. Because they're they're very different beasts. Uh-huh. And uh, but it's also something that, that Brett Williamson has done oftentimes. That's true. Well, That's so, true. So both these guys have done double duty. Yes. Dan Horan might have learned more about uh, this racing surface because he has had more laps, because the funny cars actually got to make three hits to the dragster's one. There is that, but uh, still, it's a clean slate, you know. Um, I would say Brett, uh, he's, a, he's a really good driver. Yes. I mean, he's a great racer, and he's with Mike Fuller. They have a very top-notch team. Wow. Williamson burn up a bunch down there. There's all kinds of... That thing's uh, on fire, big time. Yikes. Uh, he does take the wind light, uh, but did he take the fire extinguisher? That's a big fire. Yeah, 579, though. It's a good run. He got the win. It's out of the car okay. You know, these cars with the engine in front means when the thing's on fire, it's usually a problem. It's not like the other top fuel dragsters that Big Daddy came up with in yes. 1971. When the thing's on fire, it's all behind you. But some people, uh, funny car drivers, uh, present They're company included, <laughs> uh, and these guys Whoa! are still dumb enough to sit behind a nitro burning engine and uh, try to rotate the <laughs> earth. Well, at the 60th March beat, uh, Brett Williamson and the Mike Fuller team are going to have to dig deep to even make the call. Hi, I'm Mindy Fry, driver of the High Speed Motorsports Top Fuel Dragster out of Anaheim, California. I've got Alana and Morgan. These are the Nitro interns from the Bakersfield College Automotive Program. I got girl power on my team this weekend and we're going to win this thing. <laughs> so cheesy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adam Sorokin. I drive the Champion Speed Shop Top Fuel Dragster. I drove this car in qualifying with a kidney stone in my left side. What would kill most mortal men, I got in this thing and pedaled it five times to try to win this race. You tell me I don't want to win the March meet. So now we come up to what is going to be a real Donnie Brook. Mindy Fry is your number one qualifier versus Adam Sorokin, who barely got in with a number eight uh, shot, a uh, completely mediocre, if not uh, useless, 751. They have no data. They don't know where they are with this car. Meanwhile, Mindy is going A to B seamlessly. Well, she went A to B seamlessly once. A to B minus. It's still anybody's drag race. It yes, really is. As much as you'd like Mindy to take care of uh, this. I for lack of a better phrase, I have no dog in this fight, but um, <laughs> Adam Sorokin has often had Mindy's number. Mindy's pulling in deep. Wow, look at this. Mindy put out the top bulb and then just drove away. She uh, murdered some pistons, but a 569 at a 261 mile an hour, that is a career best mile an hour uh, for the Nitro Kitty. Meanwhile, Adam Sorokin has to just watch her march away. He did uh, give pursuit, but it was in vain. His 611 is not cutting the mustard. Adam still had problems, he had to pedal it, but he did a great job trying. I mean, and you, that's what you do. You do not give up right. and you don't shut the thing off until the person ahead of you crosses the finish line. It puts Adam on the back foot for the rest of the year. They've got to overcome now a, a, a deficit in the points uh, to win the championship, and that's the goal of, of these top teams, is to ultimately win the Heritage Series Championship. I'm Jim Murphy out of Santa Rosa, California. Uh, we might have lucked into this deal because of the rain, but sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I happen to be both. <laughs> Rick White from San Diego, California, uh, with the Neil and White uh, Top Fuel Dragster. We won this race in 2011. We've been runner-up here a couple of times before that. We're ready to try to put this thing away and do it again. This is another interesting pair between two Nitro veterans. The Jim Murphy, who has won this race four times, uh, as we've alluded to often, is seeking a fifth, and it's pretty elusive. 
But he's here this year without Roland Leong, who helped him last year to win the championship. You know, so Murphy is um, he's a tuner in his own right. Yes. He's calling the shots on his own car. Uh, right now, uh, we're looking at Chuck Neal, who's been running A fuel cars forever. He's been running uh, front motor top fuel cars forever. Uh, these guys know how to put up a big number. They know how to put up a ridiculous mile an hour. Uh, let's see what they got. It. This car gets out of shape, it bounces around, but at the big end, Jim Murphy does in fact advance with a 584, 231 mile an hour, but holy Christ, that's a lot of pistons he burned up. Holy smokes, you got that right. These guys, they, <laughs> <laughs> they all just just murder their stuff and burn the hell out of it. It's it's crazy, it's but uh, a lot of piston smoke. So, coming up, your second round matchings will be Jim Murphy, your Heritage Series points titleist, versus Mindy Fry, your 2017 March Meet winner. The other pair will feature Pete Wittenberg, the uh, Cinderella story thus far, against Brett Williamson, assuming they can button it up. Okay, welcome back to the 60th March Meet Top Fuel Eliminator semi-final action. And we're starting to see the creme de la creme or the new creme de la creme. Again, there's new faces. There's Brett Williamson, there's Pete Wittenberg, and one of them will advance to your Top Fuel final. I'm surprised Brett Williamson is even here, Rich. That was a hell of a thrash getting that thing ready. It's, uh, it was fun to watch, and uh, we were there with our cameras, and uh, the thing started. That's step one. It's going to burn out. That's step two. And now it's just got to go down the racetrack yep. quickly. Yes. Well, speaking of burnout, some of Williamson's crew might resemble the gang that couldn't shoot straight. Somewhere between that and the wild punch. I've never seen those guys work so hard. Uh, you've got... Guys, even the old man. Even the old man. Mike Fuller was giving it plenty. I mean, is this relaxing for this guys? Is this therapeutic? Why are they doing it's this? It's his hobby. I mean, very successful businessman out here having fun. And uh, if you call it that, yes. you know, but I guess when it's not a job, it is fun. I don't know, man. If I had that money and I was that age, I would be at the beach. Jim Young is a two-time March speed winner who is not driving this year, or at least not at this event, and he yeah. has volunteered to help Pete Wittenberg out, who could have used the help, and apparently it is paying dividends in the fact that they're at least in the semifinal round. There's uh, some pedaling going on there, and there's uh, some mixing up some cylinders and burning of cylinders, and Pete Wittenberg does in fact advance to the top fuel final. He goes a 583 at 219 miles an hour to a losing 594 of Brett Williamson. 
Pete Winberg is going to be in the March Meet final. That's very cool to see. You know, you like seeing an underdog guy like that uh, doing really well. It's very cool. You know, uh, good racer. Yes. Obviously. Yep. And he's a good racer because he got help from Tom Shilar. He got help from Jim Young. Right. He's a guy doing whatever it takes to be successful and have a fast car. The definition of a good racer. You do whatever it takes. Even if you can't afford it, you still do it. There are some that said that you could use some help. Would you be willing to accept help? Now? Yes. No. So you're not a good racer? Well, I, I had a lot of help back in the day. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Do I? Yeah, I don't know. I, you got me confused now. Many of us need help. I'll leave yes. it at that. So, uh, you were discussing help in the pits, and here we have Jim Murphy versus Mindy Fry, both of whom have accepted help from the Jim McLennan Drag Racing Foundation's Top Fuel Intern Program. Which is a very, very cool program that Bob McLennan has uh, instituted right. here this weekend. And, you know, Bakersfield Community College provided the interns, and uh, out of like 400 students in their automotive department, I think 18 or 20 came to the races. But all the teams accepted an intern or two to help them throughout the weekend, which is really saying something because you're taking a new crew person who knows nothing about drag racing and putting them to work on your team at the biggest race of the year. Mandy Fry's team accepted the two distaff members, the two female members of the Bakersfield College Auto Tech program as uh, Nitro interns. There is some rumor that these two women will continue to help the team and they're going to change the name of the operation from High Speed Motorsports to Team Estrogen. You said it. It's a long way to go for that joke. So, uh, Jim Murphy versus Mindy Fry. Uh, this is uh, all kinds of championship implications already at the season opener. It does, and you know, Mindy Fry, is, she's had to face the two toughest cars in the series right. in the first two rounds. So here she is again against last year's champion, Jim Murphy. Tough, tough day. Mindy marches right down towards there. a potential second consecutive March meet title. Her uh, 560 at 250 miles an hour will make her, I would say, the prohibitive favorite in a March meet final against the uh, absolutely. sophomore, Pete Wittenberg. Yeah, absolutely, a 560. I mean, tremendous performance out of that car. So I think the drama is going to be um, they're going to get this thing in. The weather's been inclement. Uh, they are marching to finish this thing tonight. Uh, I think track conditions are going to only get colder. They've been somewhat marginal all day. It's not going to get any better. You know, Cole, the, the temperature is already dropping quickly. The track will get cold, and they want to get this in by 7 o'clock. Right. Um, that gives these guys not much time to turn the cars around but uh, we'll see what happens it's going to be very challenging for the tuners and the drivers and the driver you have to get in a mindset where you're going to attack the track go to the finish line no matter what you've got to keep it in the groove you've got to leave on time you know you're going to have to backpedal you're going to have to catch it these cars do not like cold racetracks so come back for the top fuel final at the 60th March meet where the drivers and the tuners will prove their mettle. Boulevard of Broken Dreams. OK, 
Okay, here we are, the uh, top field final of the 60th March meet. Uh, Mindy Fry versus Pete Wittenberg, and on a track that is cold as... Cold, 50 degrees. Way too cold. I was gonna say, so as say. a uh, witch's mammalian protuberance in a clutch can. Uh, I know you're a writer and a literary genius. I was just trying to make it PG-13. So these guys have definitely got to figure out what's going on with this track, driver it's, and tuner alike. Yeah, it's going to be extremely challenging. You know, now the, the tune-ups are in the car. I know, um, you know, both of them detune their cars. You've got to just try to get the car to go down the track. And as a driver, you have to be in the mindset to get it down the track no matter what. So Mindy, of course, is the defending champion. Pete Wittenberg, until today, had only won one round in his young career, right. and that was at this race a year ago. So, um, you know, you have to go with Mindy as having the experience, yeah. and because it's really difficult to drive these cars when they're in trouble. When everything's perfect, it's kind of easy. They go dead straight down the racetrack. It's when things aren't right that they're challenging. So it's so easy a girl could do it? Was that where you were going with that? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes a girl can do it. Mindy's one of the best in the business. Well, let's see how this shakes out. Uh, Pete Whitberg smokes the tires immediately, but Mindy Fry gets out of shape, out of the groove. The car goes right. She takes out the 660-foot timing cone. And it's an instant disqualification. Pete Wittenberg Tough with a 1422 at 60 miles an hour is your 2018 March Beat Top Fuel Champion.